Welcome to Smoky CNC Woodworks. I'm Brian, and today, before we really get rolling, uh, recently, this last Saturday, uh, my wife and I went to uh, kind of like a little street fair craft show thing here in a local town of Sulphur, Oklahoma. It wasn't a real big event. It's called Sulphur Days, and people were putting up booths, so we ran down there and put up a booth. And while I was there, I met a few people somebody that actually does CNC locally, and I say locally within the state, and doing kind of the same stuff I'm doing. Uh, so I shot a little, few little clips with those people and another young man that was just excited because I had a YouTube channel and he has one too, and so shot a little clip with him. And so I'm gonna cut to those, let you see what those little clips are and let them tell you about their businesses. Bit Brian from Smoky CNC Woodworks. I'm here with Braylon today, and he's just coming down to look at our stuff down here at the Sulphur Days. You want to say anything? <laughs> you have more subscribers than me. I have got I, more. You got a channel? Yeah. What's your channel? It's just my name, Braylon just, Pierce. Braylon Pierce. So you guys run over and check out Braylon Pierce and see what he's got going on. So what's up, guys? I'm still here at the Sulphur Days and i'm here at another booth it's crafting with linda and they have got a lot of cool woodworking stuff i'm going to show you real quick okay so, so here's some of the stuff they've got on their table they also do cnc woodwork they've got some little cheese cutting boards out of bamboo which are really neat some u.s navy Okay, so how can people find you? You can find me on Facebook on Crafting with Linda or on Instagram Crafting with Linda. You can also reach me by phone at 405-570-0329 or at craftingwithlindagmail.com. Um, so this is another booth that's here real close by. This is Wolf's Designs and I'm going to show you the stuff she has and then I'm going to flip it over and let her tell you how to find her. So is this embroidery or screen print? This is actually vinyl. I do a lot of vinyl, uh, custom vinyl work for people. Can I see what that is? What? Okay, so how can everybody find you? You can find me on Facebook at Wolf's, W-O-L-F-E apostrophe S, Designs. Um, or you can contact me through email. It is wolffamily4 at hotmail.com. Okay, great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, as I, I had them explain how to get hold of them, although they aren't on YouTube, how to get hold of them through Facebook, I'll put those links down in the description below. And you guys run over there and check them out and see what they got going. And now for little Braylon Pierce, you might just run over and check out his channel. He doesn't have very many videos and... Uh, the next time I see him, I'm going to try to talk him into getting a tripod because a lot of his camera work, I mean, this is just all over the place, but it's really pretty funny. He's running around with a lot of his friends. So today on this video, I'm going to do, we're going to do it over something I've got a bunch of requests over, airbrushing. Well, I, guys, I'm no expert. I mean, seriously, I've just bought these things and went to work with them, and I just use them as another tool, a better extension of how I paint. But I'm going to do my best to show you what I have and how I use them and kind of what goes into these things. I've got one broke. I've actually got two of them, so I've got one broke down, and I've got one that I'm going to use to, <coughs> excuse me, choke it up. But uh, I've got one that I'm going to use to demonstrate it to you. Okay, so first off, I'm going to show you, this is the uh, Water Revolution. You can see it's a little dirty. This is the one I've been using. And I'm not exactly sure on the price of these. I actually got both of mine as gifts, uh, just because I'd ask for them for my birthday. And this one's about 100 bucks, and I've got two of them. Fortunately, they were both gifts, and I didn't have to shell out for them. The other thing that I use with mine is... A little air compressor. I don't have an Iwata air compressor. This is a master. Reason being is this little air compressor here, <laughs> it's about $130 cheaper than the Iwata one. So 
and this thing works great. It kicks on and off as I need it to. You can set the amount of pressure. Uh, I'm running this at about 30 pounds of pressure, anywhere from 25 to 30. Not a lot of pressure, but enough to atomize the paint and get it in what I'm doing. So to get started, I just open the little cup there. It really does not take much. I mean, literally three or four little drops like that will paint a ton because it atomizes so much. And so then I just get going. I make sure I have a good uh, spray coming out of it. And so to get it going, I just push down. I don't know if you can hear it. You can hear it blowing air. Now it's not actually putting out paint. As I said that, it kind of sputtered. It's not putting out paint at that, just pushing it. But you push and pull back and you get paint spray there. Okay, so the further I pull back the little knob, the more it opens up, it pulls a little, uh, for lack of a better term, pin. Let's see if I can get a little better angle here so I don't have to squat so much. Uh, for lack of a better uh, term, pin. I don't know all the terminologies of all the pieces, but you pull it back, it pulls this pin back, it opens the orifice a little more and lets more paint out. So I've got it about halfway back right there, and you can see the little the line that it's letting me do. So if I barely pull it back, I mean, it will just do the lightest, just a little light, and you just have to go back and forth until you get some covered. That is actually really good for if you're doing inside of things and you don't want to get outside the line. So whenever I'm doing things that way, so here's the trick is you go, I take it about halfway back, and the further back I get, of course, the wider my pattern. So whenever I'm really moving fast and I've really got a large gap, you push, I pull it all the way back, and you can see the nice wide path that I'm doing. So one of the things they recommend you do whenever you get one to learn to use this thing is you make dots. And so you just sit here and go, and actually that's pretty big. I'm not great at this little, this little test. And you want to make bigger and bigger dots. Just idea being just kind of the, for accuracy and uh, the precision that it will do. Okay, so now my, most of what you see me doing whenever I'm airbrushing, this is a piece that I did a long time ago. This was a <laughs> one that I messed up and so I cut it off and been using it for other things. Most of what you see me doing is filling in lettering and uh, graphics and whatnot that I have on the wood. So we'll zoom in here. Okay, so right here on this C, if I'm going to go over it, probably if I've got a clean board like this, I'm just going to open her up and go over her quick like that, and then just worry about sanding it. So if for some reason I did not want to do it that way, and I'm wanting to fill on this one, and I don't want to get outside the line, I barely pull it back, put just a little pressure, and then I just... Slowly go. I just make a lot of passes. And I try to stay inside the line as well as I can. Now I didn't do a great job on that one, but you get what I'm you get what I'm saying. I mean, so you understand what I'm saying with that, is that I just barely get a little thin uh spray going and I try to stay within the lines that way it doesn't bleed over into whatever other paint or anything else I have outside the lines and I do as good a job as possible as staying just on the letters I mean I don't just cover the whole thing because I was going to do that I just get a rattle can and just spray the whole board I try to do the best I can to stay inside the letter or the graphic that I'm filling in simply because it cuts down on the sanding and it cuts down on bleeding <coughs> So when I'm ready to change colors, I pop my little cap off, 
you see this little uh, bucket, a little small bucket I have. I take the lid off, I pop this cap off, and I dump the excess paint in there. And then to clean it, you may have seen this in the picture before, I've got a little jug with some mysterious blue solution in it. That mysterious blue solution that I use for a cleaner is windshield wiper fluid. This was a $2 jug, one gallon, of uh, windshield wiper solution. As I, do, as I do with everything whenever I get going on uh, anything new that I don't know anything about, I've researched, researched, researched. And one of the things I ran across was uh, windshield wiper solution is a great cleaner for these little kind of airbrushes. Uh, you can buy the cleaner, the airbrush cleaner, and it's like $13 for a little thing about that big. Or you could just buy windshield wiper fluid for $2, and I got a gallon of it, and that's the first gallon I've ever had, and I'm not even halfway through it. It takes very little of the stuff to clean it. And uh, I basically, whenever I get to doing that, I break this brush down, turn off the air compressor. So I'm going to break the brush down, so this is just a little thumb screw. You take off the hose. I take off my cap. Well, I have very little paint left. And so you dump the excess paint in there. I just take this solution, windshield wiper fluid, good old box of Q-tips over here, and I just clean the bowl out. So now after I've cleaned the bowl out, I remove the back of it. I'm not going to take this one all the way apart. Here is that pin or the needle I'm talking about. Release that little thumb screw and you can pull it completely out. I'm going to show you on the one that I have completely broken down. So here's the forward part of the brush. You saw the cap on the back. I took it off. I've got this one completely taken apart. So then I put all these parts back together as they were to go. And you screw them back in here. Here's that little thumb screw that you saw. And you run the needle all the way back up into it. Tighten it up put it back on. Now I haven't put everything back in. I've actually still got the switch out. I'm not done cleaning this one yet. This one could have been a bit of a oversight on my part. I forgot to clean this one out. I let it set for about two or three days. I came back up, completely froze up. And so I broke it completely down and I've let it soak for a couple of days in a windshield wiper fluid. And so I'm in the process of getting this and cleaned back up and ready to use. So you can kind of see there what they look like broke down. But overall, I am completely pleased with this airbrush. It's like I said, it's the Iwata Revolution. There are other brands of airbrushes, like Master has airbrushes. I know nothing about them. I don't know how good of an airbrush. They may be just as good. Again, this was just research thing that I did. and they, This was one of the preferred ones by modelers and uh, people who do a lot of small work. I wanted it to be something that worked well and easy and I didn't struggle with a lot. So this is the one that I chose. Okay, so beyond that, the other thing that I use is Craftex paint. Uh, I've brought that up before and mentioned it, I, and it may have just been in some comments. And I've been told by people that really airbrush a lot that there are a lot better brands out there. I'm not familiar with them. I generally just do this brand right here because we have a store called Hobby Lobby here in Oklahoma and they carry all this stuff. They carry all these hobby things like this for modelers and all that stuff and they have got a huge selection of colors. So that's why I go with it just because of ease of use. Now then I'm, I'm not above trying a different brand and I may order some different brands just to see if any of them work better than the others. This one works pretty good. I mean I have found a couple of the colors I do have to dilute it a little bit because it is so thick so it'll atomize good and uh, do good coverage. 
Okay, so the one more thing I can think of that I do when I'm airbrushing sometimes is you've seen me when I put the contact paper down. Uh, I'm actually going to upgrade that little system because I've been using just a general contact paper that I've got at Hobby Lobby. It's a real thick meal, and there's stuff that I've been told is called Aura Mask 813. You might pull that up if you're interested in using that stuff. It's not real expensive. I mean, what I've found, and you get a pretty big roll of it, but apparently it adheres better over paint and uh, you just roll that stuff on there and when you get done painting everything you peel it off it doesn't take paint up it doesn't mess up a finish and so I'm probably going to order some of that and give that a try because that's what most people have recommended to me that uh, do this stuff a lot so that's about it guys I mean I'm no expert when it comes to this stuff I, like I said I just picked it up and started painting I and just went with it and once I figured out a pattern or a, a style that works good for me I went with it and obviously my preferred way is to uh, just cover it sand it move on it's not always possible I mean sometimes some of the stuff I've cut is super thin it's not very deep so I have to be real particular with it and go real slow and a lot of times I even just break out a paintbrush for that kind of thing and I've always got a rag ready so if I've screwed up on something that thin, I can wipe it up as good as I can and I don't have to do very much sanding because you can sand out some of these lines that I cut into stuff. So guys, that's about it. Uh, I don't have anything else for today. If y'all done so yet, please subscribe and I'll see y'all next time. Okay, so first off, I'm just going to show you. This is the Iwata Revolution and I don't like my camera angle. <laughs>